that 10% of everyone in our society suffers from addiction. It's not just Bowery bums, as the saying goes, it's 10% of physicians, 10% of nurses and social workers and lawyers and owners of businesses uh, struggle with substance use disorders. And um, so first of all, it's a very prevalent illness. But you ask, what makes it a disease? Or, you know, why isn't it just a bad choice? And why don't people uh, just choose to stop? Uh, and there are so many things now that help us to understand this. Um, first of all, there is choice involved. Uh, just as there is choice and behaviors involved in so many illnesses. So take, for example, the epidemic of type 2 diabetes. Uh, that is a disease. I don't think there's much question in people's minds that this is an illness, a biologically disrupted regulation of people's hormones and uh, metabolism. Uh, there's a lot of choice and behaviors involved in that illness. Uh, and the same is true of addiction. There is choice. Uh, there are behaviors involved that one can, can choose, but the choosing is disrupted. There are very poor choices that are predicated upon the brain being disrupted. Um, and we have very good data now from our scans of the brain uh, to show the disease processes, the disease processes, and we have the family data showing us that this is one of the most inherited diseases. By that I mean the vulnerability to addiction is an inherited vulnerability that uh, the degree of heritability is greater than for hypertension, diabetes, asthma, all these illnesses that we typically think of as having a big familial component. Uh, it's greater in the world of addiction. Uh, so these are some of the reasons why we know uh, this is an illness. It's a disease with biological basis, with genetic vulnerabilities with biology that we can now clearly demonstrate. Uh, so, in a nutshell, uh, that's why we think of this as an illness, as a disease, 